Thank you. Thank you. Very easy for you to break the word of God. My intention is not to have a religious meeting whereby I teach you the Bible and the Bible story, make you feel religious, make you feel holy, make you feel uh, uh, a good person. Uh, the, the whole purpose of the word of God is not to make us feel, uh, give us a feeling uh, for our life. This has got nothing to do with feelings. This is a mandate, a mission uh, from heaven. God has appointed us to carry out a duty or a responsibility uh, in the earth. So if we don't understand the mysteries or codified instructions in the word of God, we will become barren. That's the whole concept or the definition of the word barren in the Bible. Barrenness. Unable to perceive its barrenness. What you hear me speak or what the word of God says, if you're unable to perceive it, that is a state of a barren. That means unable to bring forth or give birth to what have been conceived. The word of God carries the intention of God. It needs to be pregnated or conceived in your mind. It must then work through your system and produce or give birth, birth forth the plans of God in the earth. Many of us hear the word of God, but we always, uh, because of our inability uh, of adapting to the word of God, for whatever reason, one of the key, uh, key reasons is error teaching. Error teaching or false teaching or incomplete teaching can cause miscarriages, can cause mismarriages, miscarriages. Uh, and that will lead to barrenness. That means forever your womb, your womb will be desolate. No matter what, no matter how much the seed being thrown, your womb is unable to conceive the intention of what God is saying. These are very uh, important because if you come right in this area, then the entire 66 book will work with you. You effort, effortlessly, you will enter into the mysteries of God. So these are areas that I'm going to work with you uh, through this uh, I-66 platform to deal with the way you think so that you, the, word, the 66 book can work with you. Are you understanding? So it's very important. You, no matter how you study, no matter what you study, no matter how many sermons you are hearing, no matter how many messages uh, or meetings that you attend, it will become fertile and it will lead you into greater barrenness. Today, we have a lot of good people. All the people who come to the church for attending meetings are good people. They are good people. All are good people. But because you are unable to conceive with the intentions of the word of God, you cannot become righteous people of God. Righteous people of God. Today, a lot of people don't understand my teachings. Many are just convicted. Many like my teaching. They like my teaching. More, more of them, most of them, there are more who despise my teaching just because they don't understand me. There are others who cannot accept me. And that's why they don't even want to accept. They agree with my word. It's fine. But they don't want to accept the word because they don't, learn, don't like me. So these are the category of people that we were face. We are not here to make people like us. They got to understand. We are not in a, 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 an industry that we want to get people to like us. We must understand the purpose of the sons of God or the corporate body, the church, or the remnants. We are the remnants. It's not to please mankind. The word please, I've repeat, I'm repeating again, the word please is agreement. In agreement. 
we are not supposed to get into agreement with human concept, human mind. We are supposed to only come into agreement in Christ or with Christ. So we are not here to please mankind. We need to please the model called Christ or destiny called Christ. So our mind is consistently in battle, our own mind, who agree with Jesus, but disagreeing in Christ. Our mind agree in Jesus, but not in agreement in Christ. Not in Jesus, sorry, with Jesus, but not in agreement in Christ, our destiny. So as we read the word, you must understand this word must be conceived by this womb. There's a womb inside there. Just like a, a womb that receives a seed and it can produce a life. The same way your mind can receive a word or a thought. It can conceive the reality of what being thought, sown into the mind. It affects you to react or respond according to what is being sown in your mind. So reading of the word of God, it's very crucial and important for you to understand that all that we read need to be defined so that it will affect our mind and the word will be conceived like a seed, like a sperm that is being conceived in the womb and then will manifest the seed inside, will release the DNA of this God in your system that affects your behavior, and then you bring forth and give birth to the image of Christ in the earth. See the, the channel, see the picture. So whenever you're reading the Bible, you're not reading it to make you feel better. You got to read it so that God, you honor God, you don't read it because you're a Christian. You don't read it because you're having fear. You don't read it because you need to go to heaven. Whenever you touch the word, you're agreeing that my mind is not stable. My mind is not sound. It is not sober. My mind is broken because we have lost the capacity of having Christ. Our mind has lost the capacity of having Christ. So I need to repair my mind, redeem my mind, need to repair this vessel, our brain, this vessel, this container is broken. And every time anything being poured inside, it leaks. It leaks. So for me to repair this mind, redeem this vessel to contain, to contain the word of God, to contain the mysteries of God, I need to repair my mind. I need to repair my mind. The way to repair my mind is to return, is returning back to the word of God, to study the intent of God, once you come to a level of understanding intentions of God, your mind is actually going through a, a process of redemption. What will happen if your mind is redeemed according to the intentions of God? You will start to see spiritual things established in the earth in the natural order. Now that's what I see. I see all that. And that builds my confidence. That's my boldness. People call it arrogance. I'm bold. I'm confident. Because through the word of God, I get to see what my father is doing in the earth. And my, it builds my boldness. It builds my confidence. The world calls it arrogance, pride, ego, and narcissism. So this will happen to everyone. Even Jesus was mocked at when he boldly spoke the word, Apostle Paul and all other apostles who came out from there, wherever or whatever they were doing, 
to speak such eloquent, uh, speak eloquently on the mysteries of God. People who are familiar with them mock at them, attack them. Only a few took a step back, but to re-look into what being said. And then they found there was substance in the speaking. So you need to understand. So we have different level of challenges that we have. We all have different level of challenges. One, bringing your own mind into the word of God. Second, when you start to move in that process, the challenges that you will face. Third, how you overcome challenges and establish what can be seen in human eyes, by human eyes. You're seeing something what other human eyes cannot see. If you go and tell that I saw God sitting in my room, you imagine how people are going to respond, how Christians will respond, how unbelievers will respond. People have problem in perceiving or understanding the things of God. So if you can't see, if you see, start seeing things that you say people can understand, can uh, capture it, there will be a mixed feeling about what you're saying. In the midst of that, you and I, as we receive, we need to, uh, we need to uh, digest it into our own system that affects our own life and they immediately establishing it in the earth for others to see. And that's where we get, get into trouble. Are you with me? So my purpose, my biggest challenge is uh, throughout my whole life journey, many badges of people have come and joined me and then have absconded, abandoned. People have quit, quitted. They did not quit on me. They quit on this journey, this pilgrimage, entering the word of God. It's not easy. Moses could not take the entire population out of Egypt and into the promised land because all those he took out of the promised land died in the wilderness. Why? They don't have what it takes to hold the seat. Miscarriage. People can't finish. So I want you to know one agreement that if you're listening to my teaching, you got to hold on to the word. And one thing, you cannot follow these teachings of the word without trusting me. I know this is completely, even to my own mind, is nonsense telling people to trust me because there's nothing in the world you can trust except God. But I'm in a position that I should tell you, you got to trust me and walk with me faithfully at least for two years, one year to two years, to hear all the scriptures being read. And you see what happens to your mind and how the spiritual dimensions will start to unveil itself to you. You've got to hear me out. And you've got to actualize it. You can't just hear. You're not coming here to take notes. Hear the word. Allah pesinare, Allah varte, or very good. Yeah, one thing. But how does that affect you? Your behavior. Your life, if you become another movement of God in the earth. So you read the Bible, you read all the names in the Bible, all the patriarchs. These are not people who took note and went back home. These are people who took the word and they, they took the word in. They became the house to the word. And the word manifested through that house in the earth. Today, there are movements of God in the earth. You need to come to that place, a term to agree, I am the movement of God. I am the next movement of God for some reason or for some or for another generation. We need to understand. This agree, you got to understand, come to term with your own mind. I'm listening to Pastor my. Uh, not Pastor, Michael Logan, to hear the word, to open up my mandate, to understand my mandate, my purpose in the earth. 
that's the reason i'm hearing this man and his word they're not hearing my word to be part of my church you're hearing my word to become part of the kingdom of god you can be part of my spiritual family and that's not a church concept the spiritual family means we are operating in the spirit and as one we become a family there cannot be diversity uh, 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 divisions in the mind if we are eating the same doctrine if we are eating the same word there will not be uh, what you call uh, dichotomous thinking division in your mind split in your mind what you hear you perceive it affects your life you become another christ that's it what you hear it must bring out the christ in you cannot bring something else you got to understand that's how the body becomes one if everyone manifests manifests christ that subjective so how could how can this be so i'm been laboring through the book of john to actually to impact your mind but many didn't survive through my book of john people who have been with me for very long cannot sit with me because it's of it's it's affecting what they believe i'm not complaining or murmuring of people coming and going i'm not even interested about that because that's what people are trying to build congregations with people i'm like a technician or an engineer or an inventor trying to build something i'm not looking at people's approval i want my invention to work first at least in me it must work so i know that i know very well that's why I always when i start my meetings i always tell you guys i truly uh, am encouraged by your faithfulness to the word of god your faithfulness to the word of god not to my cloak i will be here today i will be gone maybe another day i don't know i'm here to labor in the word for you but my voice need to be very clear inside here then you become a product of christ so i bless you each and every one of you uh, this is my introduction and i want you to know that all my hard work that i'm laboring with you in the word of god is to affect your mind your mind must be affected the state of your mind must be challenged that's why i am not a very well received person in my circle because the teaching of christ will affect your thinking pattern whenever you you have a thought hidden inside you maybe you can put up a nice image in front but your hidden agendas inside you will be provoked by such teachings you can touch everything but you start certain thing people get offended but that is how the word of god is it comes true to cut your flesh whatever there's inside you says i it will be challenged it will be challenged you got to go you got to now get used to this this voice is going to offend all the i inside you inside you. this voice this is not my choice God is God is using my voice to speak to you but the word of God offends you because you are not in agreement with Christ we acknowledge Christ we declare his name we pray to his name we do all that but our mind is completely far from his status when his status come forth we close the door and we reach out even in families many of them rejects fathers who bring correction they reject fathers who bring correction 
Why? Because fathers bring correction to your mind, your structure, your system. And people don't like when you go inside and touch. And they get offended. They walk away from the promised land. Fathers are promised land. Those who bring the word of God to you are promised land. Those who bring revelation to you are the promised land. Now, you cannot enter the promised land without adversities. <laughs> you know, for them to, the word God says, you must go and take Canaan. Take. That means it is now in the hands of an enemy. You need to go and fight and take Canaan. Your spiritual fathers are such a land, you cannot conquer the land without a battle or war. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There will be provocation. Why? Because the spiritual leaders or fathers or teachers who comes into your life, they're carrying a word that will provoke anything that is fallen short of the glory of God. Are you with me? These are very powerful statements that I have to go deep in my spirit to find this weighty language to speak to you. You and I, we have problem. Not with the church. Not with this system of the world. Not with any person. We have problem with the way our mind has been corrupted. If you can allow the master, the Lord, who is Jesus, who is actually before that was the word. If you allow this master to enter your mind, he can govern your mind well. So your enemy is not outside. Your enemy is inside. And when God used someone to bring correction through the doctrine of Christ, we naturally, we will rebel. We will rebel. So this is what I want to place to you. Because as you are coming closer and closer and journeying with me in the book of John, the book of John is going to open up your eyes, but not without pain. Not without pain. There will be pain. There is a price to pay. Because at the end of this road, there is a promise to claim. There's a promise to claim. You must learn how to walk patiently. You need to have a lot of tolerance. You need to widen your perspectives. Willing to change. Willing to be subjected to Christ. Willing to forego. Willing to walk sacrificially. To enter into him, the word. Are you okay? So here, carefully. So why am I, why today I start in such a manner? Chapter 13. Sorry, 14. We we'll go to 14. In the opening was chapter 14. Just look at it. Stare at it. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. Now that one part we can do a lot of homework. If, I, if I'm meeting you in person, I think I'll use the whiteboard to trash it out. Because I need to teach you how to become an advocate of the word of God. If you don't know the formation of the word of God, how it was formed, the intention of God, you can't defend the word of God in the earth. You can't represent the word of God in the earth. Today I was just thinking, if I were to call out any of the pastors running a church, I'm not challenging anyone. I'm talking about, because there is a formula I found. If I bring them for coffee, I say, take out the scripture, read and explain to me. And I know they're going to give the religious context or the surface level of the word. And if I could humbly show them how to break the word, like the washing of the feet. It's never about being humble. The washing of the feet, it's about manifestation of Christ. And prove to them 
then what will happen to these pastors? How they will start to read the Bible properly. They will now spend time in breaking the word and looking in the Google for some good sermons. Are you with me? So that's what's happening. So I was thinking about all this. Because people do not know how to enter the word. So as I were to look, verse 1, do not let your heart be troubled. So the word heart there, if your mind sees a human heart, it's wrong. So we need to adjust our mind now today. We got to adjust our mind. Whenever you see the word heart, you must see it is speaking about your thinking capacity. Your thinking capacity. A place in you that has got the power to validate. So the heart here is referring to your mind. And within the mind, there is a place called a place appointed to validate good or evil, right or wrong. Are you writing down? So maybe this is what they're trying to explain. I have a mind that has got many capacity. One of the portion of my mind is called heart. That's why we use the word heart more than anything else, because your heart validates anything or everything that enters. A place of validation. Remember in the Garden of Eden, when God told Adam and Eve, you can eat from any of the trees, but you cannot eat from the, this particular tree. An instruction was given because God has given mankind the freedom and the power to validate what they hear. Today, you and I, we are in the same position and God is still watching us, checking us on our decisions that we make. Your heart validates. So why are they using the word heart? Heart is here, it's an organ. How to interpret this? So that's why I say we need to study symbol. We got to study. So the word cardia is heart, human heart. So how does this work with your mind? So you must look at it. Heart is a part in your body that pumps life. Blood is life. It pumps blood. Blood is life. Blood is life. So you got to understand. So this heart pumps life. So when you say in your mind, do not let your heart be troubled. Your mind that validates things of God or things against God. If, if, if your mind operates according to the ways and word of God, it pumps life. It pumps life. If it violates the nature of God, the same heart cannot pump life. It only can lead you to death. So maybe that's the reason maybe we are using heart. Heart is a place where life uh, dwells or operates. So your mind, which is not in the word of God, will not lead to eternal life. You got to understand. Picture this in your mind. So here you see, do not let your heart be troubled, be troubled, disturbed. Your heart cannot go through this struggle. So the next word will make sense. It says, believe in God. So this is not a place for you to validate. If you believe 
in God. If God, God is a system. Don't see him as another human person. God is a way of life. He is a way of life. He is a culture. He is a system. He is a personality that we see. For example, if you look at India, Rajnika is one person. But his personality has affected millions of people. They behave like him without realizing. Even other younger cinema actors in India, even the male or female, if you look carefully, without realizing, they will carry the personality of Rajniha, an actor, a person. The personality of Rajniha. The person may not affect her. They are not trying to dress up like him. Some are doing that. But his personality has affected millions. So in the same way, I'm saying, an example, right? God, you cannot look at him as a person because the person cannot affect your personality, but the personality of any person can affect your mind. Can affect your mind. If you spend a lot of time with somebody, you, without realizing, you will carry uh, one or two or some of their behavior patterns without realizing. You might carry their personal personality. Try it out. I've seen husband and wife. Wives behaving just like the husband. I've seen the couple. You know, I've seen friends who behave in similar way, even the way they talk. I've seen that. I've experimented. I did some experiments on it as well. Who are the people in church? If you go to a church, you will see very easy to find out where these people are coming from because they start to speak just like their pastor. That's why it's very risky and dangerous. That's why I'm telling you, I need to manifest my heavenly father through my life to you. If not, you will be impersonating Michael Logan and not the Christ. There's a danger there. You need to draw closer to Christ. So he's saying here, believe in God. The word believe, remember, it is not a, a feeling or human belief. It's a, it's a practical word. It's an action word. He said, believe in God. It's practice who he is. So if you go back, do not let your heart be troubled. This is not a place to validate. Just see, perceive, and do what God has instructed. So here Jesus is saying this to his disciples. Why are you so troubled? There's nothing for you to think about God, to think whether he's right or wrong. He's God. If you, you read the word, he says, A, you just do A. You got to trust him. He is pure. He's holy. He's perfect. What is there for you to wait and check? And that's why Christians use this word. I have to wait for a word from God. Uh, God has not spoken to me. All these are very childish languages. Because God has spoken all that he needs to speak in the 66. You can't pick up what he has said. And you say, I'm waiting for a word from God. God is not going to speak any more. Anything else. I can challenge the whole world. God is not going to speak anything apart from the 66. So if you want to hear the voice of God, you need to enter the 66 book and put your ears on his bosom to hear the intentions of God. To hear the intentions of God. Are you with me? Good? Clear? Okay. So, do not let your heart be troubled. When is your heart be troubled? When you do not know someone, someone, you have not known this person, you will be troubled. So here, Jesus recognizing and realizing, these people who have been with me have not known me. Later, I'll break the word known. K, uh, K W O N. 
no no we will break that word i have to show you so do not let your heart be troubled believe in god your heart as your heart is a location of validation in that area the one subject you cannot validate it goes without saying it is clear believing in god giving the place to god submitting to the way he is for him to enter and conquer you and then he said believe also in me uh, this is the advocate right now here the context believe also in me because i use the word advocate everybody will be thinking so holy spirit that's our christian paradigm have taught us is not talking about the holy spirit the holy spirit cannot interfere in your life until the word of god take position in your life the holy spirit cannot interfere in your life until you allow the word of god to take position in your mind the holy spirit cannot operate or activate himself in your life until you allow the word of god to affect your mind very clear so here the word believe also in me speaking about the 66 book in my father's house are many dwelling places i already touched this christian paradigm i've said that we have look houses so i don't go into that the word many many is also the word is great great right the english word they give you many but the 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 weight of that word is also great great is i told you on sunday uh, the word great cannot be placed for anything else because great describes only infinite god now here speaking about his his personality his personality who he is his attributes so in my father's house are many dwelling places you know how god dwells you know how god dwells if god is dwelling inside you if you become god's dwelling place now we reverse the whole thing in god's house there are many dwelling place and we want to go there or well, let me share with you this the bible also says we are the dwelling place of god if god is dwelling in your life how would that will that manifest how would it be if you see see god manifest in human body what is how's the way for you to what is the, how would you recognize that god is dwelling in a person is through your behavior your attribute so god if god dwelling in you the manifestation of his dwelling is through the personality that you carry the character that you get the way you handle matters the way you see things so in my father's house there are many dwelling place there is so much that we need to pick up from his personality instead of looking at this we have been looking to die and go to heaven and find a house to stay that's a very cheap teaching unethical cheap corrupted error it also bless to me if anyone say there's a house in engappa and paru the vida aitha pidichukkaru na setthanne anga poiren appo nege setthu po polala andha vittukke ye andha vittla irukku so i read a, a a quote from someone he say many want to go to heaven but not many want to die but no one want to die many want to go to heaven but no one want to die church ku ponga பரலோகம் தான் என் வீடு பரிசுத்தான் என் வீடுன்னு சொல்லி பரலோகம் பரலோகம் பேசுவாங்க உடம்புல வியாதி தான் பார்த்த ஜவம் பண்ணுங்க பார்த்த சொகம் கேட்கறேன் ஏன் பரலோகம் தான் போடணும்னு ஆசைப்பட்டேன் செத்து போ பரலோகம் போலாம்ல ஏன் ஹீலிங் கேட்கறீங்க ஏன் ஹீலிங் கேட்கறீங்க டோன்ட் ஆஸ்ட் ஃபார் ஹீலிங் வியாதி வந்தா எல்லாரும் கொண்டாடுவோம் சர்ச்சில் செத்து போங்க பரலோகம் போங்க லாஜிக்கா இருக்க இல்லையா in another line la i read and make sense you want to go to heaven the only way to go to heaven is what not going to church die 
<laughs> so he says, believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. When you say father, in him dwelling places, there's so much you and I need to learn. You and I have to learn. We need to know him. And then he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. To be part of that attribute. If I go and prepare a place for you, the word if I go, very important circle, if I go. That means the word if I go, he said, if only when I go, because he completes human humanity through all that process and he need to go back into the Father, in that way, he is qualified to also bring us to the complete position. So he's saying this, if I go and prepare a place for you, what happened? I shared this also. Adam was from there. He lost that position. Now, God himself came in the human form, called himself Jesus or Yeshua or Messiah. He came to fulfill the curse which was for, which fall on us. Clear everything. Now, he need to be redeemed back in that position. If he has redeemed back into that position, now it's possible for you and me to be redeemed in that same position. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. Okay. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. He says, what? I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, that you may be also. Very nice word. Because this is the intention or the sound from the mind of the Father. I want you to be with me. That's the heart of the Father. So if you go, if I go and prepare a place for you, so whatever Jesus is about to go through the whole crucifixion, uh, the three days of uh, in hell, go through all that, resurrection, came back, operated in the earth for another 40 days, and then he resurrected. This, this whole thing is a process. See, if I go, if I go and prepare, so when I, he's talking about that whole portion, when he arrives in Father, he completes the whole cycle. I prepare a place for you. I'm qualified to prepare a place for you. I will come again. Now I will be given the power to come in. Who will come again? I, hear who's, who will come again? Who's saying it? Jesus. Jesus is the manifested word. You see, the word of God says, I will come again. It's always through the word of God. And receive you. Why? How can the word receive you? When your mind is in agreement with him. That means you're one with the word. That's what I'm teaching. I'm going to start a tuition session on how to study the word. I'm changing all the Christian uh, languages, terminologies. I don't call it Bible study. I'm going to teach you how to study the word. Tuition. I'm going to start a tuition soon. I'm going to operate as a school because I find a lot of people need to be educated in the word. It's not Bible knowledge. Skills to enter the word. Right? So, he says that, Again, I will receive you to myself. The word of God says, I will receive you to myself. You become, you will represent me, you will become part of me. So heaven cannot reject you. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. See that? How he achieved or arrived in that location you saw. That's why he says, and you know the way where I am going. If you watch carefully, if you see carefully, you know 
but you if you have failed to pay attention then it's too bad for you and he says that you know the way where i am going it means it's not that they know he's saying that i've already taught you that's what he say i've already taught you i've spoken about this to you you should know you know you know the way where i am going then thomas another type of church a type of church say to him lord we do not know <laughs> where you are going the word no this no is oida at not seen oida o i d a Uh, to have seen or perceived or hence to know here you say i have not i have not perceived i have not known i have not experienced i do not know i do i can't uh uh come to come to term to agree that's the word he say i will come again receive you that where i'm there uh, where i am there you may be and you know the way he say you know when jesus says you know check for you you have the capacity to understand what i spoke the word know here now i give you the meaning of oida and also the other word is ginosko okay if you have known me in verse 7 the word is ginosko g i n o s k o now this is the most important word jesus is always asking us or tell us or told us or speaking to us whenever you use the word no is using this context to us ginosko ginosko that means to come to know i will give you a further uh, a further depth to it okay to know recognize perceive the word perceive is deep insight okay uh also taking in knowledge come to know something that i didn't know about now i just learn i know that means your eyes are open we use this word our eyes are open that means you now understand come to know learn uh as a uh, realize i give you further you know scope properly properly to know especially through personal experiences now coming to the word what xp to know means to experience okay another word and mary a virgin said to angel luke 134 how will this be seen i do not know this word is also leading to word sexual intimacy almost sexual intimacy that means two become one two becoming one so when you say i do not jesus used the word ginosko to know is that we no longer are two separate entity we are one we are in agreement we see and we think alike there's no two pictures there's only one the way i see you see as well so you got to understand so with this understanding you hear this what thomas says thomas said to him lord we do not know where you are going we heard what you say but we don't have any uh, understanding to it and how do we know the way 
So this is what I'm trying to tell you. The disciples or the church have been in the dimension or paradigm called Jesus for the longest time, but have no clue of who the Christ is in Jesus. They don't know. So today churches have become religious center. It's like a hospital. There's no power in the church. Show me a church that carries power. If there is some, yeah, there would be, but not here, we can't see. But God has already started his work to establish his house in you. And Jesus said to him, I am. So when you say I am the way, it's not showing you a signage or GPS. It's not a road. It's not a place to go. See, I am the methodology. I am the pattern. Sunday I told you. I am the GPS. You got to study me. The word is the way. And he said, I'm the truth. I am the truth. You're looking for God. I am the witness. Came from there. Here. He's in the spirit. I manifest in the body. I am the witness that there is a God. Can you remember that? And then he says, I am the life. Thomas, stop using your human brain to understand God. Don't use your religious mindset to understand God. Don't use your Christian ethics to study Christ. Or your doctrine or your denomination or what your church teaches, teaches you. Don't use all that. Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. Witness. I am the life. Eternal life from heaven. Without me, nothing is going to work for you. Now, this statement is for the whole of humanity in the earth, all over the world. Very soon, this morning, I was praying and I, I was having this conversation. Everything needs to come to agreement with the 66. Anything, any government, any system, any religion, any person, any kingdom that does not come to agreement with the 66. It will be totally pulled out and thrown into utter darkness. There isn't, there is not, and there will not be anything powerful enough to challenge this statement. The 66 book is what we need to find. We need to invest our time, our money, we need to invest everything and pursue. It's not a time for you to invest and pursue your education. I'm telling you, you cannot quit your education. It's important, but that's your, not your destiny. Shut down, system change. All the wealth plan structure that we build today shut down. Bitcoin will come and slap the living hell out of everyone. I told you guys. So what's happening? The kingdom of Christ is uh, uh, resurrecting, emerging. And every other kingdom when it comes, it pulls on other kingdom, like the palm tree. Palm tree plantation, where maramo That's why they carry palm leaf. The kingdom palm leaf, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a, symbolically speaking about the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Not Jesus Christ, huh? The kingdom of Christ Jesus. The Father in the Son. It drains everything. What's happening in the earth right now? The kingdom of God is draining everything. Pulling all the strength. Now, Bella Salitra, Baratatrua. Iposulin Sula. Umpano, Padipo, Padavu, and Terame, Wadkal, and Jano, Putta, Bellon, Tunaka, Alander Tula. That's why I got shut down the churches. Many pastors have now second option. They got to quickly do online platform. I'm going to fees for run. And I'm going to do it. So I, we don't have to rise against such. It is a sign that the kingdom of God is doing its work. But are you faithful to stand with him? 
only foolish people will not enter the world this time. Now you know, we only have few people with us. That's a sign. Idu kula buti sali ke varamata. Walagat toda buti sali ke varamata. But we call ourselves the foolish one in the world. We are standing in the word of God. Walagat toda buti sali ke we are foolish. The walagat number foolish sasa. A proverb sir ke. Amen. So Jesus said to him, "I am the way. I am the truth." and the life no one comes to my father no one comes to my father the word come comes to my father formed formed being formed being conformed the word ego my ego my e r c h o echo my echo my c h o m a i e R C H O M A I to come, not to be formed. To be formed, no one can come to my father. Now, no one can be formed into my father, become like my father, or carry the nature of my father. Say, no one comes to the father but through me. Again, again, through me. The word of God, building other. Every time when you see the capital letter me, Jesus say, he's talking about the other part of him. He is the word of God. He didn't. He didn't declare his name Jesus. He never used his name. He never uses his name because he know what's his name. Whenever you use statements and say "I and my father," "I and my father," he always says, "Declare that his name is in the Father." The word Jesus is given by mankind. They don't understand. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. If you if you break the word Yeshua, you will understand his role. His role. So I don't want to get into that. In verse seven, then I wrap up. If you had known me, see, you know, scope. If you have known me, become one with me, in agreement with me, my personality. If you have known me, you would have known my father, because the word of God cannot manifest anything else. The word of God is the manifested father, right? So if you had known me, the word, you would have known my father, Chinosko, become one with my father in agreement with the word, being agreement with the father. You would have seen him also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Now he's talking to him. He said, "Now from now on, you from now on." Sorry, from from now on, you know him, and I have seen him, and have seen him. Sorry, and have seen him. He's standing right in front. He's telling them again, "It is me." Ask you something. If God were to come into your room tonight, knock your door, and walk inside, and say, "I'm God," how many of you think you will instantly believe? Him? Not possible. Even I will test it. Because we don't have what it takes to know him. What it takes to know him is the word of God. That's why now you hear this. Now I say this now here. The word of God is saying, "Hey guys, <laughs> if you had known me, the word, you would have known my father. Also." From now on, you know him, and I've seen him. He's revealing himself to mankind. I am God. Nathan, Nathan, the cutaway. You get that the cutaway, Nathan. Now you have seen him. It's me. And then you hear what this bright Philip will say. Philip said to him, "Lord, show us the Father." 
it is enough for us. Or I, I was gone in that situation. I would have crushed Philips or slapped him at least. Because he don't understand what Jesus was. Jesus saying, I am. It's me. I am the father. Nanichi Barga, you get offended, right? I'm a director of a company. I go to my factory. There was once one guy from another famous uh, Indian uh, wedding services person. He just walked into my car. I'm standing there. My workers are working. He just passed by me. He know that I'm the owner of the company. He passed by me and went and talked to my workers. And I was quite shocked and taken aback. That whole thing was disturbing me for a very long time. For at least one week. And then he asked my guys. My guys came back to me. Uh, no, I, then whenever we was talk, communicating, this guy don't want to talk to me. He only want to talk to my workers. Then after a while, then they all pushed him back to me. He came to me then. Oh, no, I want to do my staircase. I want to do this. So I said, okay, I send you the code and all that. But it was really troubling me because the way he treated me. Then I told him, I just, the, the, at one point, I just told him, stopped him and said, I just want to ask you something. I told the client off straight. I just talk. I don't care. What is it you, you know me, right? Or you don't recognize me? No, I know you. The other one. Why is it you just passed by me and went to my workers to ask? Uh, then he said, no, I don't want to trouble you. And he, no, at least you uh, greet me one. You should greet me and come in and say, you carry on. I don't want to trouble you. I, I can talk to one of your supervisors. So I know what was the intention. He never thought I would be there. He wanted to directly talk to my workers to work for him for cheaper price. Many people will do this in this industry. So he was shocked when I was there. He don't want me to come in. He just asked my workers to take some wood and go to his office and do what he asked to do. He wanted to tell all that. So he was shocked. So I was quite offended because I'm the owner of the company. I was not treated accordingly. He did not even come to acknowledge me or approach me, I would say, and ask me for a favor or whatever. That really affected me a lot. How can someone walk to my place and not acknowledging me? It's my empire. Imagine here God, Jesus, the word of God, saying, telling them, I am him. And immediately Philip says, Oh, show me the father. <laughs> you understand what? Do you understand what's happening here? These are the guys who declare the name. Here Jesus is saying again, verse 7, listen, if you had known me, you would have known my father. Father also, for now, on you know him and have seen him. Right after that, immediately Philip goes to offend him, saying, Lord, show us the father and it's enough for us. Just show me the Father. Your job is to show me the Father. Just show me the Father. Today, a lot of people are coming to us and that's the way they come and take the word and leave us. They just want to come to us. But we must understand, God has chosen certain people in the earth and they become the uh, 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 a point of where mankind meet God. God manifests to fathers operation, not male or female, gender-free word. Fathers ask, if my language, when I say father, it's a place where God reveals himself. Father, the word father means a place where God reveals himself. And many come to this mountain called father, they just want to take the treasures from the mountain and abandon the mountain. It won't work that way. The mountain says, you want the father, see the father in that position it is. That's why spiritual father rules are very, very expensive to say, very difficult, a price to pay. That's why I say expensive. I cannot be here and doing what I'm doing if I'm not paying the price. I'm paying the price daily. I don't tell my sad story to everybody. But without suffering, I cannot come here. And that's why Jesus boldly saying, if you have seen me, you have seen him. Why? Now listen carefully. 
the father will never reveal himself apart from his son. And the son is the father in the earth for others. Sons are those who live to manifest the father. Manifest that father. See carefully. So here mankind, look at Philip, he goes to offend the father. He goes to offend the father. To say that, you show me the father. I know who you are. You are Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary. Show me the father. Don't talk. Enough. Show me the father. That's enough. That's the mentality. That's the attitude today the church has. Even if God appears in front of us. Now our situation is not show me the father. Our position right now is show me a miracle. Show me signs and wonders. Heal me. Bless me. This is not the word Christians are going to church for. And that's what they will ask if Jesus appeared. Bless us. So you understand my, my subject, my topic is, it's all about your perspective, your co correction of your mind, how you must see the word. See, I'm not telling you Bible stories. I'm decoding it to bring out the spirit of the Father so that you and I, our mind, can be restored, affect us, and we become the manifestation of God. We are not here to talk about God, preach God. That's why I don't even call myself as a pastor or a preacher. All these have been misused and abused and, and these positions have been completely marked. I, Michael Logan, I'm a teacher of the world. I'm an instructor. That I instruct people into the doctrine of Christ. And I'm producing instructors. Our mandate is to produce Produce instructors for the future generation of the land called the Word of God. And study and capture the treasure of the land is the Spirit of Christ. You go into the land and you search and take the treasure. The treasure is Christ. So with this, I bless all of you. If anybody got any question, you can ask me now. We can dialogue. If not, we can uh, call the meeting off. Anyone got anything? Or you can leave a question behind. We can reply. Everyone okay? The rest of them put uh, your profile picture, so I don't know what's your reaction. You can maybe show me a thumb. Rachel, okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah, all good. Right, guys. So I hope you, you understand understood what I'm speaking. The teachings must affect your day-to-day -day life. You need to get into the depth of the Word of God. So thank you. I bless each and every one of you. See you all soon. Okay, Richard.